high fashion lovers <clears throat> the video you're about to watch is on how i make this lovely avaya outfits um one of my subscriber requests for this so i just decided to make it today so i was trying to do the zip before my video went off i don't know my phone was full so this is the zip this is it i did it invisible way and i'm not going to show you be showing you how to do the collar in the video in this video but i'll drop a link on how i make the collar because i have a video on how to make a standing collar it's the same way i'll just check the the video and make it the way it, it was done there so this is the sleeve all other thing is detailed there the stoning you can i'll drop the link on how to also stone your outfit i have that too on my video so this is just it the full flare you can wear it to any occasion you can wear it to to wedding any ceremony so i use um four years of fabric and also i use uh, almost half pack of um, stone of dubai stone so this is the belt i attach to it and I'm the so <laughs> my daughter said it's so fine so it's beautiful and the outcome was lovely it has a slit at the side too so you can see so if you really want to learn how on how to do this so keep on watching and please don't forget to like comment and share and subscribe thank you uh -huh. for you to make design on that outfit you're going to be needing 20 pieces of this 20 pieces of this 20 pieces of this and it's not necessarily you get um a pattern that has a board that has this type of design you can be creative about yours use the design you think it's okay for you that your pattern board has and just be creative about it but the one i use on my outfit was this this and this so i made 20 pieces of this 20 pieces of this 20 pieces of this and this is going to be taking almost uh, more than half pack of stone from you so it depends on what you'll be using you can use um the bigger one you can use the smaller one but the one i'll be using on this project is um the um bigger one which is the crystal you can see so this is too much i only pour this for the, so that you see if you are working on your stone you pour your stone small small if you make it too much it will just be giving you um a little bit of time just pour it a little and use your duster to start moving it all along so we are going to be making 20 pieces of this 20 pieces of this 20 pieces of this so if you have any uh if you don't know how to put the stone or anything check my other videos i have videos on how to put your stone on your board you can check it out but this is the board this is the pattern board i used to make that design so if you think you need more on this keep on watching and look at the finishing look Thank you. Here are the stones we are we will be using rather. This is it. So this is the play pattern I was talking about. I will be using for the star. So this is it. Actually, we are not yet through with the. I told you we are going to be using 2020 of it, but we are not yet through. But this is the pattern. So now we'll be cutting the main fabric. So then we should. I'll show you how to place the stone on it. So let's go. I want to spread the clothes. I'll be doing it in a flare form. This is we have four years of material i'm sorry this is a um, bottle green uh, material and the floor of my thighs is almost the same with the material but just try and follow up with me so this is it i'm going to be spreading it in a bias form like that mm. so you spread it so full so that the down part will be full so i have a video on how i spread the flare how to cut a flare a circle flare you can also drop the link in the description box but this is what i'm trying to do i'm trying to make a flare the length we'll be cutting is i'll be making it length 60. so this is it i'm trying to fold it all right so what i've done here is that i've got in the flare you can see and i said you see, there's not something I notice about this material when I'm sewing it. Is that when I finish cutting with the normal legs, put my pin jabble as in it gets more longer. I don't know. You see, it's not that stretchy, but I discover it 
normally flow the flow that we need to trim it after. So the actual length of, of this line is 60. So what I did was just to add half inch to it, you know, because I'll be putting stone on the downside. And if it is too long, okay, let me now say I've finished putting the stone and now this cover is too long. So it will affect the trimming, as in it will affect the stone when I want to trim it. Yeah, so that was why I added just half inch to it. So aside from that, from here, I tried getting the length of my flare. Then after getting the length, I chopped it round. After I've gotten the length, I chopped it round. That was the first thing I did. And after I got the um, shoulder measurement, which is 17, which gives me 17 divided by 2, gave me 8.5. So, so this is it. So from there, I measured 9 inches, which is the arm O length. I measured it like this. So from that 9 inches, I make a shoulder scope of 1 inch. Yeah. So from here now, I get I measure this um, shoulder length down to the 9 inches of the arm O length. You understand? I measure this 8.5. I chalk it up. So from here now, I'm going to, I want to get the midpoint of this um, arm O, which is 4.5. So I want to come in by three quarter of an inch so that it won't be having a kind of bulge at the arm O part. So what I'm going to do here is, I'm going to, if you notice the style, it is a total neck style. So I'm going to be putting two and a half you can also use three inches, it depends, but two and a half is okay. By three inches, you understand? Then you can use your arm or curve to get the neckline. You don't make it too deep. Then from here, you slant. I've slanted it. Are you seeing? So from here, you come down, you connect this to this. So from here, from this arm O line, what I measured was I measured our boss. Our boss is 46. So this is 10 and a half. So I added um, 11 and a half rather. So 46 divided by four gives us 11 and a half. I added 1.5 inches. So the one inch is for the ease, while the half inch is okay for the sewing allowance. Hmm? So the one inch is for the ease and the half inch for the seam allowance. So from the shoulder length, I measured a half length is 18, but I want it to have a, a shape. I don't want the the shape to be too down. So I ha I minus one inch. I go up by one inch. So I make the half length to be 17 inches. You understand? So I make the half length to be 17 inches here. So from this 17 inches, I'm going to measure our waist. Our waist is 39. And 39 divided by 4 will give us 9, uh, nine 3 quarter. So this is it. So if you notice that side, there will be a rope there. So I added just two inches to it because I'm going to be using half inch for his and that one and a half. It's just I'm using half inch to sew. The remaining one and a half will be something that the rope can, you know, something that will tie that the rope can pack. Because if it is too fitted, fitted, it doesn't need a rope anymore. So from here now, or connect to here. Are you getting me? You can simply use your, I'm sorry, you. My husband is an aluminum man, so I have this ruler. I don't need to get ruler. So this is it. So uh, I use make use of this ruler. So this is it. I connect these two together. Then from here, I'll just go down. From this here, I'm just going to go down. Are you seeing it? So this is the way I cut that style. It was so easy like that. So from here now, I'm going to just connect my ham O. It can just come up by one inch here, so as to easily connect for those using free hand. So now you might be wondering whether it needs um, an hip measurement. You know, it is an A shape. Definitely, the waist you are putting on your A shape will surely give an excess, an extra for your hip. But if you think, okay, let me just think about the hip. A hip is um 49. So this is 49 divided by um four. We give you 12 and quarter. So you can see it as much extra. And really, we don't need tightness at the hip side. All we need the fitting from is just the bust. The waist, the um rope you are going to put at the waist side here is going to give the waist a shape already. But the ma major 
place you need the measurement for is just the bust so that it will give a fitting at the bust side you understand so this is just it and another thing is that okay i'm going to put um the abaya measurement i can just put the measurement i used for my abaya if you don't send your measurements i can simply use the abaya measurement to work for you so this is it you can also look at it and make use of it too. so i'll be cutting here 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 so i don't want the video to be too long to be too lengthy so that's why because i'm still going to show you how to put the stone on it so this is it it's um like something um red needed or this uh you know when you're cutting some flare it may need an additional on this side i don't really like it on this i think the fullness of this of the down part here it's okay we don't need to start adding our uh, additional that the flare is not too much when you start uh, when you stop it at the head side here i think it's okay I think it's okay and i've said it i'm using um four yards of of material i'm using four yards to cut this and it's by 60 so it's lengthy so it's the length of uh, the the length enough should be okay for it so you can imagine what we go through because we are cutting a flare you understand so you just have to get some place you can use to spread spread your clothes that is my shirt yes there's no more space there yeah so i'm going to i cut but before i cut the back i'm going to use office paint to paint this down because it will be shaking 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 material all right so the only difference from the back uh from the front from the uh, difference between the back and the front is just that i raised the back with 1.5 inches so this is how i did it i you know i've slanted this one with one inch so you start from the point to measure 1.5 1.5 1.5 why you're raising it is that you want it you know it has a color you want the back to roll up to the front you understand actually this makes it sit very well at your neckline so that's why i love rolling my back especially when it comes to color so this is it then i measure the 2.5 and i lower the, my back neckline by 1.5 inches then i connect this make sure you don't make it too deep you understand so i'll just cut this this then cut it down then cut the neckline all right all right so this is i've cut out the neckline 1.5 3 inches two and a half by 3 inches so this is what i'm trying to say that it makes it roll up like this are you seeing it so when we calculate the bust the total arm o okay. so this is it it's okay are you seeing it so you just use half inch to sew everything around so let me let's cut the sleeve now the sleeve too is also a flare sleeve so this is the sleeve i've spread it in an a shape this is it in a straight then i did it in a bias shape like this so after that i measured the length of our sleeve is 23 i added one inch to it because i'm going to be folding this I'm going to be sewing it. I'll tape it like the pink scarf. I just fold it a hemline, then shape it here. So I'm going to come down by five inches from my ham o measurement. But before I go, let me just measure the 24 inches all around. I measure the 24 inches all around to get the accurate flare. So from here, I'm going to come down to get the um, circumference of my sleeve. I think the total round sleeve should give me 20, uh, okay, this is 10 and a half, no. I want it to give me, this is nine inches. And I don't want the, the flare to be too, too wide. I think 9.5 is okay. Yeah. Yes, I'm okay with this. 
so this is it so from here i want to get the i'm going to divide it, this into two this is 19 divided by two will give me nine and a half and quarter so this is it so i want to get the half should i use it this way so uh, I want to reduce this by nine inches just to get a kind of shape. I'm trying to get a kind of shape from the sleeve hole. Let me measure half of our sleeve to be 13 inches. 13 inches. So from here, I'm going to measure. Now I want it to have a kind of breaking point. I want it to have a shape at the sleeve side here. So that's why I'm doing it like this. I don't want it to be that straight A. I want it to have a shape. So this is it. This is our sleeve. And me looking at that star, you see that there's an opening. So when you are closing it, just close from year to year. So the remaining one year, you open it. So you open it. But my old sleeve, the one I did for myself, I made it like a bob sleeve. So I measured. I minus two inches from the normal sleeve, two or three inches, if I can remember, two or two and a half or so. So I make, I put band, I attached the band here. So here, what I did was I gathered this to my sleeve. But in this one I'm doing, I'm making it a flare sleeve with an opening by the side. Are you getting me? A flare sleeve with an opening by the side. So here is the side, so it will have an opening. So I'm going to stop my sewing here and let, let this have an opening. So this is the curve of the sleeve. Why this is the end line of the sleeve. So how I get this was thin, like from here down here. So I measure 13 and add nine inches because it must not be too tight. But if you are measuring a circumference of our sleeve, it will be like um, 14. So it is like seven inches. So I want it to be free. That was why I used nine. So if I, if I um, add my if I sew uh, my seam allowance away from it, it becomes eight or eight and a half. So we are good to go. I hope you understand the way I go about the sleeve. So now I'm going to cut this out and cut another one to complete the two, the two sleeves. To do is I want to shape the down of this sleeve. I want it to have a kind of shape. I want it to have a kind of shape there, like a curved shape. So this is what I'm saying. You are going to sew from here and let it have an opening here. You understand? To have an opening here. So you just notch this piece. Just notch it. Notch it by the side here. Like half inch. So this here, you just fold it. Fold this in. You fold this in. You fold this in. And you sew this also. You can also weave it if you like. I prefer sewing. So this, you just join it. That's it. That's the way it is. For the next side, I'm going to be um, including zip at the center front, which I did to mine. But I make use of invisible zip. Although it was somehow bulky here, it was pushing out here, but it doesn't really matter. When I put the stone, it, it later relaxed. So what I did was I open it by five and a half inches i open this by five and a half inches then cut a face in on it i place it like this and cut it out you understand i cut a face in with it are you seeing it then i shape it out as facing so this one here and i'm going to put paper stay on it so that it will be firm and relaxed so i'm going to be putting paper stay on it so after i would show you how i put the zip and also the color so here is the paper stay i put the paper stay so what i'm going to do next is i'm going to take it to my overlocking machine 
and weave it round. Then use hemming gum to hem it down so that it will not be opening, so so that it will relax. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be using my invisible foot. So for those that doesn't know it, it's okay for fixing zip, especially if you want to make it invisible. So this is it, my invisible foot. Then you put it in this way. So then I'll place my zip. You can see this is the invisible zip. I'll place it this way. I see it. Then take the facing. I'll place the facing on it this way. Then start sewing. Yeah. So I'll open the zip gently. Don't mind the noise of my we don't have light i would have used my um, my industrial machine to so remove it gently so i will use it off So this is it. This is the first side. You can see how neat it is. But the problem I do have is this down part. So let's do the second side so that you see it. You drop the zip in like this. Place this like this. And also the facing like this. So this is the facing. This is the zip. This is our fabric, the main fabric. Then you do it like this. You can turn when you put it like this. Are you seeing me? You be careful with it so that it won't match the teeth of your zip. Be very, very careful with it. Then you move. So, assuming you are using the normal foot. It won't be easy for you to get the teeth. So that's why I prefer using the invisible foot. So after putting your zip, what I did was, I did the collar and the top thing I did was, I get the midpoint of the fabric. It's very important to get the midpoint so that your pattern, your pattern, uh, your stone will align. And you use iron to hold it down carefully before placing it on the stoning machine. It is very advisable to do this. You understand? I'm going to send the link of how I did the collar. So this is me placing the stone, the stone on the stoning machine as you can see. So you make it neat. After I finished joining it, so I was able to just get a little pieces for scarf. So you can see it. On the scarf, too, you have to put um, some attachment of um, stone. Attachment. You can put stone there. You can see. I just weave it. I don't really want to weave it though, but to get the thread that match with this uh, material was not that easy. So I just have to go with what I want because if I should fold this with this color it will, it will make the work neat so i decided to just weave it and it's okay so that's it i just did the scarf i joined it and it's long it's long enough for the person yeah. to wear yeah so thank you i would love you to watch this and also send pictures of what you've done i will drop my whatsapp um number so that you can drop what you've done and also i started with iron you see everything it is detailed it's very detailed Thank you.